Ladies and gents, my name is Pepperbelly, and I'm bringing you guys my free weekend analysis for H Hour Worlds Elite. Now, if you guys have been following my channel at all, you'll probably have seen the video I uploaded for Insurgency, basically showcasing the SOCOM Insurgency modification for that particular game. And in that video, I briefly discussed H Hour. I kind of just said that it was a game that was trying to be a spiritual successor to the SOCOM series, more specifically SOCOM 2 and it had a very low player base and it didn't look really that appealing to me well now the game is available this entire weekend to download and play for free as well as it being on sale so now i got the chance to actually give it a shot so what's the verdict then well i did my research on quite literally everything about this game and i am surprised to see the drama that's involved around the community of this game as well as the development of this game but first i'm going to leave that for later because i don't want to discuss that right off the bat i'm going to be talking about just the game itself and how it actually holds up and how it plays so the game itself is again supposed to be a spiritual successor to socom 2 kind of like it's more like socom 2 than it is any other socom game those who have actually played it. Again, my experience with SOCOM was limited. I haven't played it a ton. In fact, I actually just recently downloaded emulators and started playing it again just to kind of get a, the reminiscent feeling of what it was like back when I was playing the Insurgency SOCOM mod. So I kind of vaguely understand now, but of course I'm not like a pro SOCOM player. I haven't invested a lot of time into it to really make formal comparisons in that kind of way. So there are a lot more other individuals on YouTube that are more viable for that kind of comparison. But I will say the game is presently limited, but fun. Like, I'm addicted to it in a strange way. And because it's very bare bones, mechanics still obviously need to be fleshed out. There's not a lot to the game. And in fact, almost every single weapon currently in the game feels identical. Like, there's no real distinguishing factors between the two. Or between all the weapons, not just the two. Like, every single weapon pretty much fires and behaves the same way. Like, I haven't noticed any accuracy penalties, recoil penalties. Like, I know if you pick a submachine gun, the crosshairs are slightly tighter versus having an assault rifle. But when you're actually firing the weapon, the difference is negligible. It's not really there. Gunplay seems to be, need to improve a little bit. And the animations are, as I've always thought throughout the entire time I've heard and seen this game since it's Kickstarter... I always thought the animations looked really stiff and strange. Well, they still do, but they're not terrible. They don't look god-awful, especially compared to a lot of other games out there. Of course, the characters are stiff, but at least they have really good models. The characters look, like, fantastic. I was actually surprised, first of all, about the level of graphical fidelity this game actually has. It's built on Unreal Engine 4, so naturally the visuals can be really nice if the developers actually invest time into putting in terrific textures and shaders and whatever and it actually looks better like every single update this game has been getting the graphics have been getting a little bit more polished so the game actually looks good like I, I was surprised it kind of reminded me a lot of what America's Army 3 looked like but with way higher shader models textures and everything because obviously Un uh, America's Army 3 was developed on Unreal Engine 3 this is Unreal Engine 4 but, like, the environments and the, the overall feel kind of reminds me of, like, America... It gives me an America's Army 3 vibe, only with, like, far more impressive visuals. And, of course, completely different gameplay that's not even close to what America's Army is supposed to represent. This is a fast-paced running gun shooter in third person and in first person. And it's... It does it quite well. Now, again, it feels like SOCOM, and the only comparison I can really make it to would be the SOCOM Insurgency mod, because I have a lot of time invested into that modification compared to actually playing the SOCOM games, especially how you're playing with the keyboard and mouse versus playing it with a controller, like a PlayStation 2 controller. There's a difference there that you need to kind of accept because you can't com really compare the fluidity and the gameplay when you're talking about a controller versus PC, keyboard, and mouse. It's the same way as like comparing Star Wars Battlefront on the console to the PC. They're vastly different games. Like, they're the same core mechanics and everything's fundamentally the same, but they feel different in the way they play just because the controller methods and the input methods are different, and that actually translates to slightly different gameplay. So, my comparison to the Insurgency mod, I would say this game plays almost identical to it. I prefer the fact that the character model is... A little bit more upright because obviously insurgency's character models 
are like different and they're not quite as fleshed out and polished and vivid as the character models in this particular game. And the crosshair placement in the Insurgency mod and the character placement is kind of like, I've said it in that video where it threw me off on the characters a little bit too far to the right of the crosshair. This game seems to have fixed that a lot more, especially when you crouch. When you crouch, it's like your character drops straight down versus moving to the right and down, which obviously kind of places them off point of where your crosshair is. So the character models and the movement and everything feels a little bit better in this game. A little bit. I'm talking like it's pretty much negligible. In fact, playing the two, it's really hard to distinguish the difference other than the fact that the crosshair bobs up and down to basically replicate the recoil of the weapon. Whereas in the SOCOM Insurgency mod, the crosshair actually stays completely still and recoils mimic through the entire screen moving, pretty much like most traditional first-person shooters do it, where, you know, if you don't have any crosshair spread to mimic, like, cone of fire and all that kind of stuff, like, the screen will vibrate or the screen will move basically with the crosshair. So the crosshair is completely stationary, where in this game, again, it's not. You can see it bouncing up and down. They also have arcs for grenade trajectory. So if you're going to pull out your grenade and throw it, you'll actually see a line giving you an arc of where you're going to throw it. I personally love that because it kind of gives you an idea of where you're actually going to throw the grenade versus kind of just like guesstimating or going off of uh, your instincts to instinctively just throw the grenade in the right window or whatever the case may be. So it does alleviate some of the guessing there. It kind of just makes it a little bit more precise in the gameplay and your movements. And there's a lot more deliberate action involved because of little things like that. It just lets you know exactly where and when and how you want to achieve certain things like throwing a grenade into certain windows or certain rooms in a very specific fashion. It makes it a little bit easier to determine what's going to happen. So it's little things like that that actually define the difference between H Hour World's Elite and the SOCOM Insurgency mod. Now, of course, this game is actually a fully fleshed budget price. It's not a mod, right? This is a game that's actually been kickstarted. Lots of people have given thousands and thousands of dollars and it's obviously got a nice budget to develop around and they're using Unreal Engine 4. So there's a lot more to it versus just a mod that's free and available for a game that's already put in place, which means they don't have to add anything else other than just redefining the camera and the way some of the core elements function. In this game, they actually have everything. So obviously they got nicer sound assets. So the game's sound engine, the way sound actually plays out in this game is very nice. Like hearing gunfire off in the distance, the crack of the rounds, like everything is actually kind of impressive. And it's reminiscent of what like suppressors sounded like in SOCOM 2, because I'm pretty sure they got the same sound engineer to actually come in and flesh things out to make the experience a lot more true to form of traditional SOCOM games. So, I mean, that's a good thing. And I actually like the game, but it's not without its problems. For example, one issue I was having right away was with the actual keybinds. If I wanted to put my selector lever function to change the fire rate of the weapon onto one of my side mouse buttons, I can do so, but it wouldn't save. And if I want to change prone to a different key, like say a more traditional games with having Z be the key to go prone, it would still keep the keybind for changing the fire rate on Z, which is what its default is, as well as prone. So when you go prone, it would like make you go prone and it would change your fire rate at the same time. And your mouse button wouldn't function at all. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't change it at all. If you go back to the options, it would still be listed there as Z for both keys. And when you're also picking your keybind, it gives you a scroll down window to choose the key you want versus just pressing it and inputting it, which to me, is a problem, it's time consuming, and I'm not particularly fond of it. So go more the traditional route of most PC games, and that would be kind of great. I also don't like the fact that I can't access the options menu to change graphics or anything while I'm in game. Once you hit escape, all it does is bring up a menu to quit or not quit. It's like, well, you want to quit, yes or no? It doesn't give you the option to access the options menu, which is absolutely mandatory to me in PC games, so you can fine-tune things and visuals and your controls while you're in-game, like mouse sensitivity. It took me a while to find out exactly how I wanted my mouse sensitivity, and I finally achieved it by constantly flipping back and forth between the game menu and joining a match. Again, it's incredibly bare-bones, there's limited maps, it's like, things need to be fleshed out to be better, and again, I'm not really the guy you want to talk to to critique it in that kind of sense of giving you, like, telling you what to do because I'm not a huge SOCOM fan. Like, I haven't invested enough time into SOCOM to really give you an accurate 
assessment of core gameplay mechanics. I have an idea of how the game plays. It's pretty simple. It's not too complicated. But again, I'm not a competitive SOCOM player. So if you want to actually get the game fleshed out to be exactly the same as SOCOM 2, a very true to form spiritual successor to that series, honoring its name and everything, you're going to want to listen to those who've actually invested far more time and are very critical and analytical of everything regardless. And this is where it brings me to my next point. The community that surrounds this game and the developers themselves and the way they've handled things. Now, I've been researching this extensively, listening to other YouTube content creators and live streamers, and it's kind of pathetic how poorly this game is moderated. Like the moderators on the forums, the way the developers treat the community, the way things have been handled, it's piss poor and it's like the worst I've ever seen in a game community. Like it's completely unwarranted, it's unnecessary, and it's ridiculous. Purposely shutting out nasty criticism or just negative criticism at all and then having the forum literally filled with white knights, everyone coming to defend the game, those who are close to it or in love with it, or spent a lot of money and are in denial, the fact that it's not living up to everything that people wanted it to be. Like, there's a lot of people out there that come up with legitimate criticisms of the game, and they get shut out, and banned, and suspended, and all kinds of things. Just like trying to basically wipe out what needs to be said. And that's unacceptable. You have to listen to these people. You cannot do that. It's childish, it's pathetic, and it's going to basically just ruin your game. It's not going to benefit you at all in the slightest. So my advice to developers would be, swallow your pride and listen to everything and just take it from there. Like, listen to all criticism, all aspects of it, and improve the game so it can really be what everybody wants it to be because the community wants a good game. I want a good game. I'm liking to see that this has immense potential and I want to see it fully realized. My name has been Pepperbelly. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one.